today on Caught for Two, a spoiler-free review of the five mystery suspect cold case games in the Murder Mystery Party series. Which of these games represents the worst of the genre and which represents the very best? Stay tuned to find out. You are watching Caught for Two. My name is Jesse Reichler. We've got a bit of a challenge ahead of us. I'm going to review these five games, all part of this murder mystery series, but I don't want to give anything away, so I'm going to be very vague, um, but I'm going to try to talk a little bit about how these games differ, where they're the same, and then the punchline, of course, is going to be sort of ranking them and talking about um, which ones I would recommend to you. So let's get some preliminaries out of the way. I've already made a video about this genre, which I call the mystery suspect genre. You've got a huge amount of documents. You've typically got a whole bunch of suspects and you're trying to find the one real culprit. So everyone looks like they're plausible candidates. You have to find the one. There's no luck. There's no randomness. It's trying to be immersive, so you've got lots of documents that feel real of a whole variety of types. Um, all of these games from this same series, Murder Mystery Party series, you solve by going online and uh, identifying the real criminal. And then you read some epilogue, you get told if you're right or wrong. They're non-replayable because there's a story involved, a mystery. Uh, but none of them involve destroying any evidence. Okay. So we're going to try to be relatively quick, but I'm going to spend some time talking about sort of general issues of what's high, wh which games are high quality and lesser quality and what makes those high quality games work so well and what makes the others not work. But if you are... Just looking for a ranking of these games, you already know that you don't need to know any other information about which, except for which one is the best. You can go to the end or just look at the list in the description. The other thing to say, so I've already said that there's another video I've made talking about the genre and reviewing four or five uh, specific games in the genre, uh, a couple of which are in this uh, video as well. So there's a little bit of overlap. And to make things worse, there's going to be another video focusing on a different series. But two of those in the other series are also in this series. And I'll explain that next. All right. So Murder Mystery Party Case Files. This company, University Games, that makes this series, makes a couple other a related series that you can find on Amazon for larger groups. And you'll notice here that one box looks out of place. It's labeled as Detective Stories. That's because this is the version of Fire and Adwerstein I have. Fire and Adwerstein and Death in Antarctica, these two here, were licensed from the German company Adventure that made this detective series. So this is the original German version. You can also get in the original German version, Death in Antarctica, originally in German, and two other games that are only found made by the German company. Only these two were licensed by University Games. So they've got one that's of this same format for Adwerstein. If you want the other two German localized into English versions. You can get those separately. You can watch my separate video on those four games in that series. But for our purposes here, these are the five games currently as of 2021 in the Murder Mystery Party game series. So these two were, were created by this German company, have nothing to do with University Games. And University Games, um, Either they licensed from a different source or they in-house developed them. But these three games were developed by two authors. The first two, Underwood Sellers and Mile High Murder, 
were made by one person. Um, it's in here somewhere. Bruce Whitehill. And then this one was someone else who I'll I'll put I'll put on the video. Okay. So let's give you the punchline first. These three games, these three murder mystery party case files are at the very bottom of the genre. I don't mean just at the bottom of these five, but at the bottom of this larger genre of cold case files. If you watch my other video, you'll see that there are several other companies making these games, and I would put these at the bottom in terms of the overall quality of the mystery and experience, and I'll talk about why in a second. I would put the licensed from adventure games, these two in this series, more if you go outside, at the very top of the genre, in a class by themselves. A totally different experience. So the rest of this video, we're going to talk about why that is. What makes these the very best, top echelon of this genre, and what makes these the very worst. And I take no pleasure out of picking on these games. If you really love this genre, there may be something here for you as well. Um, and maybe if nothing else exists, these would still be pretty cool. But given that you've got lots of choices, these are sort of at the bottom of my list. So we're going to sort of, sort of freeform talk about different aspects of these games, and then I'll comment where I can on how they differ. Um, let's talk about difficulty. These are all very easy to the extent that they're convincingly solvable, satisfyingly solvable, they're very easy. These require some real work. Much more effort, much more thinking, and much more time involved. So in general, these are listed at like two to three hours. Fire and Edwardstein um, is listed at 120 minutes, but I think you, would go, you could go long on that. Um, these maybe an hour or so, depending on your group, depending on how much time you want to take. Um, but harder, longer, fuller experiences, shorter, easier experiences. In terms of the documents, I mean, let's take a look at one of those. Probably you're familiar with this genre if you're watching this, so you probably have some idea what it looks like, what the stuff looks like in all these boxes. They're all fairly similar. They share lots of similar ideas. They all come with a sheet like this to help you take notes. Suspect motive means opportunity and alibi. Um, and I'm going to, we'll go through one of these from Mile High Murder. There are no real spoilers. All of these games, you look at everything. That's the first thing you do. So this is everything you'd see if, when you open this box. If you think that's going to bother you to see that now, then you can look away. There's a little introduction that tells you where to, what website to go to solve it and the contents. And you'll typically find things like this, little maps and diagrams, newspaper snippets, in um, that feel like newspaper. The uh, murder mystery party has this cool thing where they tend to put some little recipes in the newspapers. That's kind of fun. Then a bunch of props. Different games will have different props. It's not uncommon to find a little notebook. And you can see it's trying to do the handwriting stuff. Now I will say one of the differences in quality, they both have fairly similar quality in terms of the material. I would say the German sourced games from Adventure feel a little bit m more realistic. Like when you open that up and you see the handwriting, it looks like it's handwriting on that. This looks like it's printed, uh, like the print looks different. It doesn't look like a real pen. They went to a little more effort in the German sourced games to make you feel like it was real. When I opened these, I felt like I was trying to remember, did I buy this used and someone wrote in it? Like that's how the writing looked real. But this is common, like postcards with some writing, some little props, lots of photos so you can get a picture of who, what 
the potential suspects are, crime scene, crime scene evidence photos. Um, and then very common in these games are a bunch of interviews with all the potential suspects. So like they rounded up all the suspects and now each one has an interview. You're maybe looking for contradictions or psychological, you're getting their side of it. Um, and then lots of extra little accessory documents, reports, letters, etc. And this one has quite a lot of them. So that's what you're dealing with in all of these games. That's the basic basic set of documents. And as I said, most of them are quite similar. They all are quite generous. They have lots of documents. They feel they're varied, they're novel, they're all fun. I wouldn't say you can judge any, the quality of these games based on that. They're all pretty good. Um, one other issue, one other area where they differ is in use of the internet. So all of the Murder Mystery Party games say in the upfront, if you want to go and use the internet, if you want to use your mobile phone to find information, you can do so. Without going into, well, let's just say it's not a big part of these lesser games, and it's a very big part of the adventure licensed games. Each of the different adventure licensed games has a different sort of gimmicky thing with the internet that you'll find. And it's a, a substantial part of the game and it's rich and it's interactive and it's fully fleshed out and very well designed. Um, okay, quality of the writing. Again, a huge difference here. The You've got the quality of the writing of the story, the sort of um, ideas, twists, mystery, which again, feels like a different caliber here than here. This is much more, uh, these are much more sparse, surface level mystery things. And the dialogue is fairly pedestrian and low level and straightforward. Whereas here we've got much more, much richer dialogue and writing and developed characters and sort of taking your time with the story with more twists and turns and just satisfying stuff. There's, uh, in future videos, we'll talk about other games in this genre that, that do a particularly nice job with some of that. Similarly, um, to sort of quality of writing is sort of the pacing, the arc of the story and how well it unfolds while you're trying to solve it. And um, in these two games in the series, Adwerstein and Death in, uh, Death in Antarctica, there's a real effort to sort of set up a, an unfolding of a mystery, a pace. And it's difficult to do in this genre because generally you're just thrown everything. You're thrown a, a dossier with all the documents. So you sort of get everything at once and you can choose what order to do it in. But without going into details of how, these games are mostly designed to give you like a, 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 a multiple chapter uh, experience so that you feel like stuff sort of unfolding a little bit as you do it. Um, these games, no, except for one uh, exception um, in Underwood Cellars a little bit. You'll have to play it to find out what that's about. It's actually, Underwood Cellars is a little bit clever about that. Um, and as far as this pacing and arc, when I played, and you can watch my playthroughs of Fire and Adwerstein and Death in Antarctica, online, the live stream playthroughs, both of these had real aha moments, real moments where uh, we were up against a wall, couldn't figure things out, and then figured something out, and then it got confirmed, and real aha moments. And those give you the feeling of sort of being in a movie or in a, in a real detective plot. And those are found in these and not really in these. And that's a big part of why you're playing these games for those aha moments of feeling like you've solved it. Okay, 
Let's talk a little bit about some details of the nature of the puzzles. Most of these games are sort of just freeform deductive. You're trying to piece together the murder and figure out who did it and how or why. But there are other little mini games in some of these. In fact, there are mini games in each of these two and not at all in these. So each of the adventure licensed games has a, some little crypto code breaking puzzle that you have to solve one better than the other and some little careful timeline stuff you have to figure out. These are very thin on that stuff. That's very little to figure out other than sort of figuring out maybe what the real culprit, how they slipped up in answering something. Very surface level, very shallow. Doesn't use internet, does use internet, but in a pleasant way. You might think, I don't want to get involved in the internet with a game. And if you really are dead set against internet involvement into, into ever going on the internet to solve these, that rules out these games for you, in fact. Um, I hope you don't rule them out because I'm not a fan of using the computer or internet when playing these games, but uh, it did add to these, add to the experience. But they require it. So if you don't want that, then maybe these are better for you from this series. But there are games that I think better than these in this genre that also don't use internet. Um, getting into a little bit more about how you solve how do you come to the answer that the game is asking of you? Sort of the simplest way, the most straightforward way that some of these games in this genre work is you sort of say, well, this person couldn't have done it because they were elsewhere, their alibi, their timeline doesn't line up. And you basically rule out people and then you get to the one that had to have done it. And that was what I would call the simplest, least satisfying way to run a mystery, to have you come up with a solution. And in general, these tend towards that or tend towards finding one piece of evidence or one thing that one person said that makes you convinced it's them. Whereas these are much more of a holistic experience of putting together lots of chains of reasoning and subtle things. And when it all fits, it makes sense. So much deeper, more complex. Now, another place that some of these games can go wrong is how much unpleasant, exhaustive work do you have to do searching for a needle in a haystack? And I would say for the most part, these games don't do any of that, don't have any of that bad aspect. And there are a little bit, there, there's, a, there's a risk in these games of that. There's a little bit of that in these games, sometimes not in not in these partic in this particular set, but there are games like Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective spin-offs where there are big newspapers and you you might have to spend an hour looking for one little needle in that haystack. And most people find that frustrating. It's a trade-off for me. Sometimes you feel like, well, I got rewarded for that hard um, disciplined work your mileage may vary. But uh, there's a little bit of that negative that, of that in these games. But um, in terms of the rich, satisfying nature of deduction, that's what, you, what, I th what I play these games for and what I think most people who love this genre play it. They, you want to play it and feel like it's not easy, but you've worked hard and you've put you figured out what all these things that didn't seem to make sense or seemed like loose threads or loose ends or red herrings. You've now put all the pieces together and you finally look back and you say, oh, now I get it. And I think these two games from adventure licensed games have that. These do not. Um, most of these are little one detail. Once you spot the one detail, which isn't that hard to spot, then you know who did it, why, at least the be as best as you are going to. These are not like that. These, you're not just going to find the one thing that gives it all away. You're going to have to work hard to solve this. 
And both of these games, Adversine and Death in Antarctica, have real chains of reasoning. You figure out a little bit, but then you don't quite understand the next part. And then you figure out that part, which leads you to investigate here, which leads you to go back and recheck out something you kind of remembered. And those chains of reasonings that lead to those aha, mom aha moments are really satisfying, and they're found in these games in spades. Another way these games differ is how sure you're gonna be that you've got the right answer at the end. And I think for the most part, in these games in the on the left, you're gonna you're either gonna know the answer and be disappointed at how easy it was, or you're gonna be unconvinced at the end that the answer was was there at all. These games are a little more middle ground. You could get these wrong. Um, but I think you're gonna narrow it down enough to be fairly satisfied. And the paths that you'll take to get these will be much more twisty and convoluted and interesting than here. Here it's just very straightforward. And you can feel when you play these two games, the amount of work that went into setting up false leads, uh, red herrings, you can't, look at these games, you can't look and see that there's too much here, it has to be something. Sometimes a lot of effort goes into, a lot of effort went into these games to make you, make it so that you cannot assume just because there's something there that that's, the, that's important for you. So they're willing to walk you down a false trail quite far. Here, not so much. They're not gonna put that much effort into a false trail. And the clues here are more subtle and ele elegant than the clues here in these three. Okay, let's talk a little bit. This is a good segue. How much work and effort and care was put into the actual solution system? If you look at these two, the licensed one from Adventure, the detective story, German licensed ones. The website where you go put in your solution, uh, oddly enough, there's still the German localized English website and then University Games, when they licensed, they made their own website. In both of these cases, especially with the German one though, a huge amount of work went into the hint system page. They all have pages that you can get hints if you get stuck or if you just wanna check your answer before you do your final answer. The German one has a, has a whole bunch of sections and each one, again, I say German, but it's in, it's in English. They have a localized German version and a localized English version. But the hints are very gentle, very gradual and spoiler hidden so that when I played Adverstein, Rather than trying to answer it, we went through all of the hints. There's a lot of them, like dozens of them. And you can gradually unlock little pieces of each hint on its way so that it doesn't reveal anything that you didn't already figure out. So that you're only looking at stuff that you think you understand till you get to some point where you're wrong. It's a very gentle, gradual way of confirming what you know. That's important because if a game doesn't do that, for example, if a game follows the Sherlock Holmes consulting detective approach where you open an envelope, and some of the games in this genre, nothing on our table, but some of the games in the genre do this, where you open up an envelope and read the solution, you basically must be sure of your theory, and then you're opening up and you're gonna be told the answer. So there's no there's no way to get a second shot at it. With all of these games, if you decide to look at the hint first, or if you decide to guess the answer and it will tell you no, you're wrong, all of them do that, then you could go back and say, all right, I was wrong on my guess. Let me see what I, let me try my second guess or let me try to figure it out more. So that's a nice aspect of this whole genre. But the hint system for these two is much more robust and, and done with care 
to make it so that it only gives you information gradually as you need it. These are much more, these are like you've got three hints. You click hint one and you're told a whole bunch of information. Maybe you knew it, maybe you didn't. The solution is even more dramatic, the difference. The solution for these two games is a long, detailed solution with pictures and images of uh, and arrows pointing to all the evidence that point, should have pointed you to the right direction, evidence that pointed you in the wrong direction and explaining why. It's a long explanation of the solution. Very satisfying. You can see all the care went into some of these things. It explains why you might have thought this was important, but why it wasn't. All the timeline information. When you finish looking at the solution to this, you understand everything and you understand how everything fit together. These three uh, games in the series, Death by Chef's Knife, Underwood Sellers, and Mile High Murder, range from really atrocious, really one paragraph solutions that doesn't talk about any of the details to bad. That's the range they are. They're all bad. Some are really terrible. But for all the work that went into making these games, and, and make no mistake, lots of work, all of these games, a huge amount of work goes into making the documents and making everything look real and making it all consistent. It's really inexplicable that so little care was put into explaining the solution to some of these games, like it's an afterthought. And that really lets these down. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about sort of how fair the game is, how fair the solution is. And by that I mean sometimes all of these games require a little bit of suspension of disbelief in the sense that you're playing a sort of... Um, What's the right way to say it? It's sort of a cartoonish motives. You're, you're playing a game where you have to, you give, you, you, you give a little bit of allowances that the game's going to murder someone, whereas in real life it, they might not get to murder, right? It's a little bit of an extreme case. But it's not infrequent in these games to be like, well, would they really have murdered for this amount of money? Was that really a good enough motive to murder or... Was that coincidence really too big a coincidence that it feels a little implausible? Or is that premise, is that alibi make sense? Or do these details... So there's lots of little details to make this machinery of a puzzle work that can feel stretching it. And so I think for all of these, you have to give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. But I would say in general, this series is much more cartoonish. This is much more work went into making the coincidences plausible, less leaning on ridiculous uh, coincidences, less leaning on... Um, none of the games in this series does it, but I've played games in this genre where there's sort of artificial things, coincidences put in that are just completely implausible, but serve to throw you off the trail, and sometimes that feels a bit of a cheat. I wouldn't say these have too much of that. Um, so these don't really fall into that problem, but they also don't, or don't feel like there's, a, there's rich things to figure out. I mean, they don't, these authors didn't throw you off the trail at all. So it's not that they threw you off the trail, trail by cheating, they don't throw you off the trail. Um, but in general, motives are better here and alibis are better here. All of those little pieces are, are more believable here for the most part, for the most part. All right, I think we're at the end. Let me rank these games for you if it's not clear within this group. I would put at the very bottom, the game I would recommend least would be um, Death by Chef's Knife. Easiest, least satisfying, least compelling story, mystery, etc. Next up would be Mile High Murder. This one here. Um, 
maybe a bit better, but um, bottom of the pile. Then uh, third up from the bottom is Underwood Sellers, which I thought had some nice ideas. Then we're moving, then there's a huge gap to the next tier. And again, remember those are at the bottom of this entire genre, not even including the games not on the table. But as we get into the top tier, I would say Fire and Adlerstein, which is the one that's most well known of this series. Um, again, it's top tier, but I put it at the bottom of, of this set, of this advid adventure detective story set. If you can get your hands on the English version of the original uh, German company, get that one. It's a little better production, but not much. And then close to the top of the series, maybe at the very top of this entire genre, maybe the best game of the entire genre, but you'll have to watch my video on the four games in the advent adventure series, Detective Stories. There's two more that aren't here, made by the original German company, to find out where this ranks. But the top of these five, Death in Antarctica. And there you have it. Hope that's useful to you. I'm not sure there's anyone who would watch this to the end. Maybe you just skip for the ratings. But if you're interested in this genre like me, if you love talking about it, there's more videos to come. You can watch my roundup of my first video on mystery suspects, games, the genre. I talk, I talk about some of these issues we've talked about here in more detail. And do stay tuned for a future video looking at all of the adventure case detective stories games. So that's Fire in Adlerstein, Death in Antarctica you see here, but also Still Lake and Kaifeng 982. And if you're interested in this, this genre, you might, if you're going to play these, obviously play them. But then you can watch the live streams afterwards. I typically take five hours or more to play these games and then talk much more about them. You can join me in those live streams for future games. And um, so if you play the game yourself, you can come watch afterwards to hear my thoughts and just hear someone, how they tackled it differently than you. Or if you decide that these games are too much work for you to play, but you're curious, to see how they play, you can watch the live streams instead of playing. And I'll see you next time.